herbs and use the promo code Rolling. Now back to your Rolling Martin Unfiltered video. All right, folks, back to our Rolling Martin Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, many of us, us try to take our health seriously in 2019. Folks want to get healthy, folks want to get well, folks want to feel a lot better uh, and lose some weight. Well, one of the ways to do that is uh, working with one of our partners, the folks at D Herbs. Uh, yesterday, of course, we talked to uh, the CEO, Dr. A.D. Dolphin. The D Herb uh, body, Full Body Cleanse uh, is a great way for you to feel better. Uh, and, of course, look, many of us, how we eat, how we abuse our bodies. We ate all kinds of stuff during the holidays, processed foods, fried foods, you name it. And so what this cleanse does is just clean out the toxic buildup in your system. I've been doing it uh, for this. This is like day 12. And so, uh, yeah, I still want a good piece of chicken or some steak, but I can't. <laughs> but between the raw vegetables and between the uh, cleanses, that's exactly uh, what it does. And so uh, what we can all do, the D Herbs Cleanse together. You can go to dherbs.com, dherbs.com, use the promo code Rolling uh, at, for a discount at checkout. That's the letter D Herbs .com, or you can call 866 4 D Herbs. 866 4 D Herbs. That's 866 4 D Herbs and use the promo code Rolling. Now back to your Rolling Martin Unfiltered video. Earlier I talked about with Derek Johnson about the NAACP and the Women's March, and of course it is taking place this weekend. Uh, they have been embroiled in drama while they also are still organizing. Uh, of course, three years ago they had some 500 plus sponsors. Uh, based different reports say that's now down to 250 or 200. Earlier this week, the Democratic Party pulled out as a sponsor. There were media reports uh, that the NAACP pulled out as well. Well, Derek Johnson just answered that for us. Uh, and you had lots of criticism, folks going after uh, the leaders of the march, including my next guest, Tamika Mallory, uh, who joins us right now. I'm glad to have you in studio. Thank so, you so much for having me. Um, this is you on the View on Monday. Um, Megan McCain, others came after you, came after you. Folks have been demanding that you condemn uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan. Um, first, how has uh, the last several months been for you and Bob Bland and Carmen Perez and Linda Sarsour? Certainly has not been an easy time. Yeah, well, first of all, let's put it in proper context. For two years, and you know this because we've talked about it a number of times, uh, we've been under attack. So it wasn't just the uh, Louis Farrakhan issue. We've been dealing with issues um, and, and, and this sort of mounting uh, pressure for a number of reasons since day one. We came in, there was pressure, and it continues to be. And we knew that getting closer to the march, there was going to be uh, an increase in demands, an increase in uh, a power grab, because that's really what's happening. Uh, there is a power grab. There are people who are trying to remove the current leadership so that they can take over the organization. And they're using whatever it is that they need to be able to do it. You know? The the group tablet, I mean, this media entity, they put this, they put this story out. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been talking about it, saying that from the outset, you and others were attacking Jewish women uh, right. in the group at, at some of the first meetings. Your response to uh, this massive story that they did, that, that basically said you and others are absolutely anti-Semitic. Right. So, so we walked into a room, first meeting that we ever had, just meeting folks, don't know you, just show up, how are you doing? Hi, did you know that the Jews controlled the slave trade? That's <laughs> what we <laughs> supposedly did. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't happen. It just didn't happen. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Of course not. It's not how we talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, did, it didn't, you know, it just didn't happen. So that's the bottom line. I mean, there, I, I wouldn't even Completely waste time. I wouldn't even waste time getting into all of the details around it. But it didn't happen. And again, what folks have not asked is like, who, who are these other people making these claims? Where there are people who we asked to leave the leadership of the Women's March for different reasons, and they have started a competing organization. And then all of a sudden they come up three years later with these allegations that we walked into a very first meeting telling them that Jews, you know, controlled everything and that, you know, and, and that we were just the most anti-Semitic people in the world. And the truth of the matter is what really happened is that the, the first piece was, and it was a legitimate question from the Jewish community around 
my association to the Nation of Islam. There were people who had legitimate questions. They wanted to understand. And we were having those di that dialogue. This happened last February at Savior's Day, which we all know is one of, is the highest holy day for yeah. uh, the Nation of Islam. But folks who don't know, what is that relationship? I work with the Nation of Islam on a number of issues, particularly gun violence. That's been one issue that I've worked very closely with the nation. And, and I mean, the bottom line is I'm a black person in America who's an activist on, who's been see. out here yeah. doing this work for over 20 years. So right. if you didn't meet the Nation of Islam while you were out here doing your work, <laughs> you were not I just, in I'm the not black sure community. like no. where, what right. black community That's you work exactly in. Right. And, and I work specifically with people who are some of the most marginalized. Mm -hmm. you, you know from covering things that we've done in the past, I, we, we work in prisons. We work on street corners. My own son's father was murdered. So I, I come from a, di I'm not a, a celebrity activist. I'm not a Twitter activist. I'm not a TV activist. I'm the real kind. I do the real work. And when you do the real work, there are complex issues and there are many groups that you meet with that you may or may not agree with all of their philosophies. But the black experience is extremely complex. And, you know, sometimes y you work with a lot of different people. So that's, that's the relationship um, that I have. And, you know, and I appreciate the nation of Islam for its role in the black community because it has been an important one, period. So just to, to sort of go back to what I think, you know, is, has been going on is that there was this initial issue around me going to the nation of Islam event. Uh, Minister Farrakhan uh, has made statements that have been very, very, very hard and hurtful to people in the Jewish community and in the gay community. Um, and there were questions that Jewish people had. And I was willing, and, and that the uh, folks in the LGBTQ community had, and I was willing to sit down and explain it and talk and work. And so these people, I believe, sat back and watched it and said, okay, let's see if this kills them. Mm. And then when that didn't work, they tried a little bit, you know, they know that I'm a, a person who supports the people of Palestine. So they shifted their focus on that and tried, let's see if that kills them. And when none of that happened and they could not work the guilt by association factor well enough that, you know, you, you, they couldn't just say because you were in the room, you were inherently anti-Semitic. The next thing was let's lie and put it directly in their mouths so we can make it stick for real. Mm -hmm. So that's when they began to pile on with these other actors. Have you, you talked about uh, those, th the comments that he has made. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever had a conversation with him where you said, brother, you're wrong. Yeah, certainly. I mean, we've had conversations where I've said, I don't agree about this particular, you know, your view in this particular area. Um, and there have been times when he has, he has said, I don't agree with the organizing strategy that I may, you know, be following. You know, his position, uh, particularly around voting, has been a place, uh, a point of contention in terms of what the Nation of Islam believes and what we believe. Because so the Nation of always, Islam does not believe right, in voting. They don't believe that voting is the answer. There are some people who vote, but it is not their overall strategy for black liberation. And so the reason and I asked you that, the reason I asked you that question in mm -hmm. terms of have you talk to him or challenge him on his statements, mm -hmm. and you just said you have, uh -huh. is that Cornel West right. has been very vocal mm -hmm. uh, about Farrakhan being a friend, calling him a brother, but writing in books and talking publicly how he has challenged mm -hmm. Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I'm saying that because it's, it's interesting when I listen to people uh, who, to, who, who, who talk about this, who actually don't have any clue about black people, uh, who don't actually understand that. But yet Cornel West is still uh, booked on television shows right. all across the country, uh, teaches, uh, speaks all across the country, and folks have not said, how dare you uh, associate, associate, associate yourself with Farrakhan, even though he has said, I love my brother, but we've had hours and hours and hours of vigorous battles over his anti-Jewish, anti-LGBT uh, comments. Mm -hmm. As you have gone, as you as, as you as you have gone through this, so for instance, when you were on uh, the View uh, on Monday, and Meghan McCain kept asking you, "Do you denounce Farrakhan? Do you believe that what?" Your critics want as they want to hear you say, I denounce Louis Farrakhan. Because that, because been, that, go ahead. I've been asked by a number of people to do that. I mean, I've been asked to condemn, to denounce, um, and I have said and will continue to say that I do not agree. My position, to be very clear, 
is that America has condemned and denounced black people for far too long. Mm. I am not going to participate in using that type of language to describe anyone in my community and particularly someone who has been engaged in saving the lives of young black men that I have to work with every single day. I go into prisons, I work with young men who have actually uh, committed some heinous acts, things that I definitely don't agree with, but I don't come outside and condemn them or else I can't go back inside and work with them. The men who killed my son's father, I have never condemned them or denounced them. Am I hurt? Is it, does it hurt me? Are we angry as a family? Absolutely. But we haven't condemned them because I believe in the work that I've been doing that the person on uh, the person on the shooting side of the gun and the person who was the victim both deserve the love and attention of people who claim to be black liberation fighters. That's just who I am. So you can't take that from me because one thing that is is a hundred percent sure is that I cannot separate with my skin color. I can't separate with who I am walking into the women's march space. That's not who, that's just not who I am. And if intersectionality is going to represent all of us, then people have to be willing to understand that what is important is who I am. Louis Farrakhan, Minister Farrakhan, is not a part of the women's march. He's not, he has not been at any meetings. He's never spoke on any of our programs. He's not helping to write the, the policy agenda that we're releasing tomorrow. He is not involved in any way. And in fact, and the, the, the infantilism of we tell you what to say and you must be using his words, but yet everyone is fighting for women to have agency over their bodies and their minds and their, and their, their ability to speak for themselves. And yet people are going to take the words of a man and make them uh, something that I'm supposed to die for on the cross. I'm not going to do that. I reject that. I don't agree with statements that Minister Farrakhan has made in a number of areas. And that is OK, because I don't agree with stuff that Roland Martin says. And we know you you don't really care. But, you know, <laughs> I don't agree. And I mean, and not to make light of it. No, seriously. Yeah, there absolutely. are times when people have challenged me, where I have to challenge others in, 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 you know, in our community. But I also understand the sensitivities around denouncing black men, denouncing black people, and the denouncement and con condemnation that has happened to us for far too long. You talked about releasing this tomorrow. The event is taking place on Saturday. Uh, do you, Carmen Perez, Linda Sarsour, Bob Bland, do you have any intention on um, walking away and quitting the Women's March, this organization? No, we are serving out our terms. We are uh, term, but, but we have term limits based upon our bylaws. How long is and the term? And we're, we're serving out our term. They would love to take that and chop it up and have that all over the place. Yeah. We're serving out our terms. Um, and we, can't, we came here to do a job. And if you look at the body of work that the Women's March has produced, we have held a uh, protest around some of the most important moments in the last two years since this administration has been in place. We've been one of the leading resistance groups and the most intersectional movement in the world in terms of ensuring also that marginalized people are at the are in the are sort of like the secret sauce to the conversation. We keep on making sure that we bring up Shakisha Clemens, who was attacked by police officers in a, in a Waffle House. So we won't allow people to talk about any issue, not reproductive rights, just no, not one issue without looking at how it impacts people who come from oppressed and marginalized communities. And that is the reason why there is a continuous onslaught, again, because you got to be real clear, there are people who have legitimate questions and concerns, and those people deserve the time and attention and affection of the Women's March, because only through that will we be able to really move forward as a strong movement. But that is not all that we are seeing happen here. And anyone who believes that all this is is just people asking questions, they, they're wrong. Because Meghan McCain asked six questions at once. Hmm. She never stopped to allow me to answer any. And the and the and the 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 the, the go, I don't even want to use the wrong word right now, but the nerve of people to believe that because she did all that, that I was supposed to just answer her as she said. So so massa, you get to tell me how to respond. That's not going to happen. 
And if people can't understand the implications of a white woman yelling at me and trying to badger me into saying what she says, even if I wanted to say it, I wouldn't have said it with the way in which she was speaking to That's me. That's right. Question from each panel. I'll start with CJ, go to Scott, then Greg. You know, it is a very complex issue, but it can't be an issue is one for one side and one for the other. So today you had media condemn Republicans who met with um, the young gentleman who is a Holocaust denier who used to be a reporter from Breitbart. And they came out and spoke eloquently about why they should not have met with this gentleman. But this gentleman was not talking about anything about other than DNA and genetic codes. So now we're at this particular piece for this Women's March. And I think it should not be a double standard. I think at this particular time, those who are advertisers and the belief of anti-Semitic views and the LBGT community, they should have a right to pull back the funding based on some of the members in leadership. They should have a right to pull back funding from the NAACP if they choose to participate, being that you do have Jewish Americans who co-founded the NAACP. Okay. Those are my comments. So, Mickey, you want to respond to that? Based upon what? Based on the fact that some of your leadership has said some horrible things oh. about Who you. said that? And um, who gets, Linda. To, who, who gets and so, to choose? I'm just asking you a question. Mm -hmm. Who said that we said it? Did you hear it? No, hold on, hold on. I'll ask a question. What comments were made that you said were hateful and harmful? Linda, um, the young Muslim Linda lady. Sarsour. Mm -hmm. Linda Sarsour. Linda Sarsour. She has said through Twitter some things that were been disparaging. Like what? About and a two state and about Israel. So my no, thing is, no, 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 I'm no, just no, saying, no, no, I'm just, no, 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 no I'm going by clear. what I'm seeing you, on, on social you're, media. You're saying that yes. you believe that because Linda Sarsour has said that there should be a two state solution, you're calling that hate? No, but not just a two state solution, but she's also advocated violence against Israel when did oh. and being supported. That? that never happened. And that's just, no, 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 so tell no. me the exact Show me the proof. Quote. Show me the quote. I'll okay, go through. I'll go through and look. But I this is what that I've that, seen and read say, on social hold on, media. Hold on, no, wait, 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 wait. Let me just hold on. You're saying you, I'll have, go through you and look. have seen and read uh, mm -hmm. where Linda Sarsour has advocated for violence against Israel. So I need to see the proof. Tamika, go ahead. I'm, so the bottom line is, this is what happens. They start lying. Never happened. Linda Sarsour has probably said, and I don't know for sure what tweet or whatever she may be mentioning, because I know she didn't advocate violence against anyone. Linda Sarsour is one of the most uh, beautiful women I've ever worked with, and she doesn't advocate for violence against anyone. What she has said is that if you are killing a particular group of people, hmm. that there may come a time when those people retaliate. And she has said, let us figure out how to heal everyone so that there is no bloodshed. That's what she said. She's not advocating for violence against anyone. So that's just a lie. And I'm just going to tell you the truth. So if you make that claim, show me the proof, and I'll put it on the screen. But I want to see the proof. Scott. Yeah, uh, Tamika, I think your, your presentation today, I couldn't have done it better in front of a jury. I mean, it was just real and thoughtful and appropriate. I'm always concerned when our white brothers and sisters call for us to condemn our leaders and to denounce them when we don't require them to do the same for their leaders like from the Nazi party or from the white nationalist party. We got a president that won't do it and can't do it comfortably without, without reading it, right? So we are not a monolithic people, black people. We are not homogeneous in our political and economic thought. We, we are complex, and we got complex issues, just like you said. And so, you know, why isn't, I guess for me, the question, why isn't it enough, in your opinion, why isn't it enough to disagree with Louis Farrakhan or to disagree with other black leaders who are working hard in the community at the grassroots level because of our complex issues as a community, right? Why isn't that enough? Why, do, why is it in your, your piece enough for them, in your opinion? Well, I think that because of, I think is the, the, the litmus test that exists, mm -hmm. um, that has been in place for a long time to figure out ways to tear black leaders down. And so to whenever separate. we to separate us from one another, to create confusion. Mm -hmm. And so 
whenever they feel like one of us is is actually gaining in terms of building a real sustainable movement, they begin to use these different tactics to try to discredit mm -hmm. you. And you know, I don't the, the litmus test that around uh, Minister Farrakhan has existed for a long time. Right. Absolutely. So I think that's one of the reasons. Greg Carr, yes, I, I, I want to echo. I want to thank you, Tamika, for being not only for your work, but for being courageous enough to take this stand. As you said, they want Martin Luther King to meet with Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and there he is sitting in his living room like, I don't mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. But that takes great courage. For the young people in particular who are watching this, who will be participating in the march this weekend, some of whom may be on the fence because of propaganda, because social media and technology has disrupted everything. Mm -hmm. So like you say, you got Twitter activists and people who wouldn't bust a grape in a fruit salad, mm -hmm. who've never done anything, going to put up the courage to talk about you, we'll call it the fake courage. Mm -hmm. To the young people watching this, what would you say to them yes. to help them sort through all this mm -hmm. confusion mm -hmm. and get past mm -hmm. it to this black mm -hmm. unity? And I say this as somebody who has met Minister Farrakhan, mm -hmm. attended many meetings, who understands that the least of these, the rejected by this society, mm -hmm. is a reason why they gravitate to the nation of mm -hmm. Islam, because they are not turned away. You talk about marginalized people. What would you say to those young people who are watching you now, who have seen you lay this out, mm -hmm. and who are a lot more clear, but still may need a little bit more to understand what they should do next? I, I would tell That's them, important. first of all, they need to make sure they're studying their history, that there's always been tension in movements. There's always been confusion. And in fact, white supremacy is set up in a way that it is supposed to create confusion so that people are not able to get focused and to unify. Yes. So what is happening right now is that there is a power grab that seeks to uh, take away your voice, really. That these young people need to know that they are the energy. They are the energy that is needed in this moment mm -hmm. to keep this movement going. My job is to, to be here to facilitate a place for them to have a voice. It is not for me to be the leader that is exalted, that everyone is going to love, because I'm definitely flawed. I'm going to make mistakes. <laughs> I'm certainly not going to do everything right. But this movement is about all of us. And so young people who are watching need to know that they're showing up not for Tamika Mallory, not for Linda Sarsour, not for any of those things. You're showing up for yourself. You're showing up because your parents may be a part of those who are not working right now in yes. this government shutdown. Yes. You're showing up because we're releasing a policy agenda tomorrow that deals with gun violence, that deals with immigration policy, that deals with issues, health care and reproductive justice, excuse me, you, you're showing up on behalf of yourself. You go to the move, you go to movement spaces to get more courage and more resources and information to go out and be a stronger movement, not and to be a stronger leader in your local community, but not to be there just because you, you like one person. So that's what I would say.